All right. Okay. This here is the M&P 9mm. It's basically just a full-size standard version. And um, it's basically brand new. I've had about 100 rounds, something like that, through the gun before I ordered the Storm Lake threaded half by 28mm threaded barrel. I wish they would have uh, still been producing the metric, the 13.5 uh, left-hand um, thread pitch, because in my honest opinion, which is factual evidence, um, is a better thread pitch for a suppressor because it has an O-ring that engages on the front surface of that. But with these half by 28 threads, there's no O-ring. You just basically torque that thing on there, like just mad tight, and hopefully, you know, you won't have any problems. And as, as the gun heats up, usually, you know, the, the, the metal, you know, starts to expand and, and it does create a makeshift, you know, seal. But anyways, um, this is the M&P 9. And uh, right now I've got loaded up with, the first round is going to be uh, full sonic loads at 115 grains. And the second shot will be uh, 147 grains, which is inherently a subsonic round under this, uh, you know, sound barrier. And so it's just, it's just going to go back and forth. You'll have a sonic crackle, and then you won't have a sonic crackle. So I've got uh, 10 rounds loaded up, and they're going to be alternating, and I've alternated them in the mag. So I'm going to stand back there and uh, give the audience kind of what it sounds like to be shot that direction with a suppressed gun using, you know, subsonic and full sonic loads. So you'll hear the sound difference. Alright, so that pretty much right there, let's step in some shit, anyways, that pretty much right there sums up the efficiency of a 45 suppressor. If I didn't mention that earlier, this is the SWR Octane 45 HD suppressor. It has a 45 size hole, and I'm shooting 9mm through it. The advantages of that is being able to shoot uh, calibers under the size of 45. Um, but anyways, uh, that Storm Lake barrel, drop it in, a couple drops of lube on top of the, the, uh, top of the barrel there. You know, you get a hand racket a few times, it'll wear a little bit of finish off. And, uh, you might get a jam or two, at least with a suppressor, until that, that, that finish wears off and then you won't have any problem at all. But, um, I'm telling you what, those, uh, 147 grains were pretty quiet. I hit the uh, back of the um, pond back here. I don't know if you can see this or not, but I was shooting through this brush, and on some of those subsonic uh, shots, they uh, hit the pond, and it made it sound like it was a full sonic load, and it just made that crackle. But anyways, this is a really good gun, so especially as a suppressed uh, a host gun. Now if I can get my camera to do its thing, there we go. And by the way, uh, a lot of you guys have been asking me since I've shot the Beretta Suppressed. I didn't even talk in that video. Y'all were asking me what kind of camera I use. It's actually a cell phone. It's a Nokia Lumia 1020. 
and uh, it takes really, really high quality badass uh, videos. So if you're looking at getting a cell phone upgrade, the Nokia Lumia 1020 is currently the most powerful camera phone. Um, its camera is a 41 ultra megapixel of some sort. And uh, as of me recording this video, is the most powerful camera on a, a cell phone. And that's what I have right now recording this. So that's pretty much it. And if you're thinking about uh, getting an MMP and doing this, uh, making it suppress, it is a badass freaking host for a suppressor. Now, when I shot my Beretta, um, I would get tons of blowback right in the face. I'm talking about just chunks of carbon would come back and hit me in the face. And this, as a suppressor host, seems like on the M&P, it's actually quieter than it was on my Beretta. And it's just kind of weird. I was shooting the same ammunition, so I guess it just has to do with the actual action of the actual firearm itself. But uh, this is a striker-fired gun. And the slide's a little bit stiffer, so I assume that the lock time is, um, you know, a little longer than it would be in a uh, Beretta. But the, uh, you know, the forces have to overcome the hammer, but the forces also have to overcome this recoil spring. So, anyways, I'm rambling, so that's pretty much it. And, alright, whew, ooh, oh my god, oh my god. I'm just still recording because I don't know what I'm going to do. All I know is Navy Man needs to get one of these suppressors. If he don't, then he's not a real Navy Man.